All right. So in this problem, what we will do is we'll take the similar case. We have a wedge like so. And let's say the wedge has a mass capital M. And there's a block over here. The block has a mass small m. And, and the, there's a floor which is frictionless and the surface is also frictionless. And imagine our goal is to push this block this way, okay? So you push it like so. The whole system has to be pushed with the force F. And the whole thing will start accelerating towards the right. And the goal is you make sure M does not accelerate with respect to the block, to the wedge, okay? So mass M, so let me use red for this. So M, should not accelerate accelerate with respect to the block to to the wedge if i want this condition what should be f that's the question now, this is actually a neat level problem it's a little involved it's a standard problem so don't expect it in neat exam because this has been asked many number of times. Okay, so let's try and see. Why do you think that when you push something this way, it's not going to accelerate down? I mean, how is pushing the whole system this way gonna keep this from accelerating down? I mean, how is he gonna do that? Well, the trick is to understand what's going on, sit on the wedge now. That means we are gonna go into the non-inertial reference frame on, of the wedge. Since the whole wedge is accelerating towards the right, I don't know what that acceleration is, but let's just assume that the acceleration is A. From the non-inertial reference frame point of view, this fellow experiences an additional gravity. Remember, in any non-inertial reference frame, you get a fake gravity in the opposite direction of the acceleration. So if you go to the wedge reference frame, so let me go to the wedge reference frame and draw over here. Here's the wedge. And now I'm going to assume the wedge is at rest. From wedge reference frame, what will happen is uh, you will see some, you will see an additional gravity acting this way. So, what are the forces acting on this guy? We have the normal gravity, which is mg. That's that's the regular gravity. We have the regular normal force acting. That's the regular stuff. But along with that, now we have a third force, a third gravity, an additional gravity that comes this way. And that gravity will be having an acceleration A. We did that in the previous episode. So there's an additional force MA acting this way. That's what anyone standing over here would see. So if you are standing over here, you would actually feel two gravitational forces, one this way, or two components, I should say, one this way, one this way. So the net gravitational force you feel will be somewhat like this. Okay, all right. So the three forces, if, if this number is just right, then the three forces can cancel out. And that's why the whole thing can remain at rest. This can remain at rest with respect to this. So we need to figure out what the force is, or maybe the first step is to figure out what the acceleration is. What should be the acceleration of the entire system so that the block does not slide down? Well, that's easy, right? You see, this problem looks difficult when done from a ground reference frame. It's not really difficult, but from the non-inertial reference frame, it just seems so easy. Just by adding an extra force, all I need to do now is just cancel all the forces. That's it. So let's do this quickly. So here is theta. Here's the angle theta. And again, we have a choice because it's in two dimensions. We either we can choose uh, uh, this as x and y or along the direction as x and y. Now again, now now see, now there are no accelerations. But I'm going to choose this as my x and y. Can you see why? Why am I doing this? Well, that's because mg and ma are already along my x and y. I don't have to resolve them. If I choose along the block or along the slide, I'll have to resolve both ma and mg. So we can, we can, be try, we can try to be as conservative as possible. Okay, so if this is theta, this angle is theta, which means this angle is theta. So we have now n cos theta this way. And you also have an n sine theta this way. Since there shouldn't be any acceleration with respect to the wedge, 
acceleration as seen from this reference frame should be zero. So I'm gonna call that a dash because I'm already using a. So a dash is the ref acceleration of this guy. The whole thing must be zero. So this thing must be in equilibrium. So we can again use Newton's second law. We can say sigma f x equals m a x. In the x direction, you have two forces. You have n sine theta, which is acting this way, and you have m a. That is the fake gravity, but it's in this way. So that's m a. So n sine theta, which is acting this way which is positive, minus ma, it's a fictitious gravity, so fake gravity acting in the opposite direction, these are the only two forces acting in the horizontal, must add up to give me z uh, mass times acceleration, which is zero, because there is no acceleration. Therefore, n sine theta must be equal to ma, that's equation number one for me. Similarly, I will apply Newton's second law in the y direction, may, and in the, in the y direction, you can see n cos theta, which is positive, minus mg, which is negative because I've chosen upwards as positive, should be equal to mass times acceleration, but there is no acceleration, that should be zero. So n cos theta must be mg. So we'll substitute that over here. So n must be mg by cos theta. n is mg divided by cos theta. And that should be equal to ma, m cancels. So we now understand the acceleration that we should give to the entire system must be equal to g tan theta. But the question asked was, what should be the force? Well, now look at this whole thing. The whole thing has a mass of m plus m. And you are trying to accelerate the entire object m plus m with an acceleration a. Now don't get confused. I said that this block should not get accelerated with respect to this. So from this fellow's point of view, this block is not accelerating. A dash is the acceleration of the block with respect to the wedge. That's not the true acceleration. That's the acceleration seen from non-inertial reference frame. The true acceleration can is only when you look at it from the inertial reference frame. And from the inertial reference frame, both the wedge and the block are accelerating towards the right with the acceleration A, which we just found out. So we, we can now easily calculate what the required force is. The required force F must be equal to mass times the acceleration. G tan theta. Ta-da! So, this is a pretty involved problem. Not very easy, not very difficult. But notice that you can solve it very easily once we change our reference frames. It's not that you can't solve it from inertial reference frame. Obviously you can, but you have acceleration to deal with. The beauty when you transform over here is that there is no acceleration. We will solve more problems where you see non-inertial reference frames, is e it's much better to go into the non-inertial reference frame add the pseudo forces like the fake gravity and then solve it. So see you next time.